Good evening, 26 Charlie Tango 1679. That's Steph here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, antenna that uh, I currently run when I'm uh, static mobile in the hills. Uh, many of you probably uh, copied me using this antenna, and I find it quite uh, quite good actually uh, compared to obviously shop bought antennas which uh, I've had for a number of years. So obviously the modulator and the Midland Big Spring. Okay, this one's made of uh, some 25 mil plastic conduit and uh, a few little bits like a bolt, washers, uh, a nut and uh, some electrical cable. So we're going to start off uh, explaining how I actually uh, manufactured this antenna. Okay, I'm going to start off with uh, a broom handle uh, and I'm going to chop off about 40 millimeters of length. Uh, the broom handle needs to be sort of about 25-26 mil diameter so it just gives us a nice uh, fitting with inside the conduit. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of chamfer the top of this uh, just to allow it to get into the conduit once I uh, eat the conduit to allow it to expand. Just an easier way to get it into the, uh, the plastic. Okay. I'm going to then drill a hole about 9.5 millimeter diameter. Uh, so we want to clamp this in the vise to do this, obviously, because it's uh, much safer to do so. And then I'm going to thread a 3/8 by 60 millimeter bolt through the hole. From the chamfered end uh, and again it should be a nice tight fit with a 9.5 millimeter hole but if you find it's a little bit too sloppy you can always uh, you know, make, you know, make some glue up uh, some epoxy resin and uh, obviously apply that to the threads towards the top and as you screw it in it's just going to give it a bit of a location and hold it in place okay what i'm going to do then is fit the two washers to the bottom and the 3 8 nut I'm going to keep these loose at this point because uh, we're going to need to connect the cable to this uh, after installing it into the conduit. Okay, so the conduit needs to be uh, around about uh, 61 inches in, in length. Uh, that's 1550 millimeters. And I'm going to use a blowtorch just to uh, eat the bottom end up, just lightly heat it up. I don't want to go overkill. You might even be able to do it with a, a paint stripper heat gun, but Obviously, I used a blowtorch to just make it malleable to allow the uh, the wooden block into the bottom. I'm going to slide the wooden block into the uh, conduit uh, just so it's uh, fitting flush to the base of the conduit. And then when we tighten the washer, it's going to be flat against that block of wood and against the base of the conduit. Okay. Allow it to cool. Um, obviously, if you do need to straighten it as you've applied it in, you can do that whilst it's uh, still malleable. Uh, you obviously don't want it being a, too crooked on top of the uh, on top of the car, but uh, it uh, just makes it a little bit better. Okay, what I did then is cut uh, 17 uh, feet of uh, mains cable, and I'm using 1.75 millimeter mains cable, so that was twin and earth. So obviously stripping the outer sleeving off uh, to expose the three wires, and just using one length of the wire. Another way to do it is cut the half them out and then use uh, the live and the neutral wire and solder together. But either way, it's uh, the, for the cost of the cable, it's just uh, just as easy to do it to uh, the full length and just use that bit of wire at a later date. Okay, I need to strip off about uh, let's think about around about uh, 25 mil off the bottom, an inch, uh, just so we can wrap it around the bolt. Uh, and then we can clamp it with the washer using the nut. So once we've clamped all that up nice and tight, we can then wind the cable around the conduit. Now I wind it tightly all the way around it at the bottom to start with, and then I stretch it so it gives it an even spacing all the way up to the top. But the last of the top part of the antenna needs to be around about 14 to 15 turns, and they need to be close together. We use that part there for SWR on the antenna, Okay, so if we compress that, uh, we're actually shortening the electrical length of the antenna. And if we space it apart slightly, we're going to increase the electrical length. You may need to pull another wind towards the, uh, the, the coil or move one of the windings away from the coil. But I find uh, that I've got a good uh, SWR at uh, around about 14 turns. Okay. The other way you can hold the top part in place is to just tape it in whilst you're just doing the experimental part of SWR on it in. Or you could even just drill a little hole and put around about uh, half an inch, 12 millimetres, 
uh, into the top just to hold it there okay best thing to do if you are actually we are on it and try and do it on low power to start with just in case you are getting some high readings if you do key for a long period of time you don't really want to damage the uh, the output stage of the radio uh, I found that I was quite uh, close to start with without having to do much messing about uh, so I advise low power to start with and then turn it back up to your standard 4 watts uh, output uh, for the actual final test to ensure that you are getting full reading and correct reading. Okay, a little bit uh, of information I use there is that uh, if it's high on the high channels, the antenna is too long, and if it's high on the low channels, the antenna is too short. So I was, you know, do 40 of the Muppet Band and channel one of the uh, mid block uh, and then that will give you a good wide spectrum and you really want to give it a sort of a mid range at channel 40 on the mid block uh, which will give you a nice sort of SWR reading. Uh, I'm getting quite low on one end of the spectrum and up to about 1.5 on the other end of the spectrum. I'll uh, show you some photographs at the end of this uh, just to demonstrate that. But what, you know, I found this antenna to be good uh, against, uh, like, say, the Midland Big Spring and uh, the modulator. Uh, when I put the modulator on, I was doing some testing with uh, receiving. Uh, transmitting didn't seem to make much uh, difference uh, with a friend I was talking to. Uh, obviously, I had to RF gain down, so he was able to, uh, you know, take me off the 30 plus mark because I was quite local to him. But obviously, it didn't didn't change the reading at all uh, on his radio. But uh, between the uh, modulator and my antenna, I was actually getting uh, a 1 dB gain uh, on receive. And between the mod uh, big spring and my antenna, I was actually getting uh, a half a dB gain. So we were getting a good uh, good performance on the receive side of uh, things. Uh, again, further testing is required to uh, see how we are on transmit. But it may be that I was a bit too close and wasn't getting uh, a good... Uh, Good test report that way, uh, which I will do some more testing up in the hills uh, later, uh, probably this month or, or you know, mid year, that sort of thing. And I'll obviously uh, do a, another part of the video and uh, explain my findings. But uh, yeah, it's a good antenna, uh, it's easy to do. I'd say I mounted on a mag mount uh, base, and uh, again, it's just you know, say, say putting up a, a bigger antenna uh, whilst I'm up in the hills, I find it suffices and does the purpose. Okay, thank you for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing other people's own brew videos and comments uh, on this video, uh, and see if we can get some more improvement designs out there. Thank you very much.